So often this season, winning teams are finding themselves having to come from behind. That wasn't a pun. When Manchester United bought Robin Van Persie, Alex Ferguson claimed it was a statement of intent that they were not going to lose on goal difference this year. And so far it's worked out quite well. Robin Van Persie has scored 8 goals in 10 appearances and contributed to the overall tally of 29. Very nice. Problem is, they've still conceded 16 goals and they've gone behind 8 times this season. It's all well and good buying strikers to up your goal difference, but that doesn't excuse you from taking a look at the problems at the back. It's a bit like having a leaking bucket and then fixing it by putting in more water. It's gonna get full in the short term, but you still got holes in your bucket and your feet are gonna get wet. Teams have to find the right balance of strong defending and creative attacking, and Man United are only halfway there so far. Throwing all journalistic objectiveness out of the way and speaking as a fan, I want you to sort it out, because I don't want to see Blue on that trophy next year. It doesn't look very nice. Aston Villa, to their credit, got it absolutely right this week. They closed out the United defence, and they created their chances wherever they could, and then when the opportunity came to pounce on the counter-attack, they took it and punished United with two really good goals. So, credit to them, and it's a shame they didn't hold on. The other problem facing teams right now is consistency through the full 90 minutes. Tottenham, for example, had a much better first half than their opponents Man City this week. They looked great in front of goal, they bossed the champions and made them look like a mid-table side, and then just before the close of the first half they went 1-0 up, and that goal... It's one of them. However, in the second half, Roberto Mancini made an inspired substitution, and then City managed to pull a goal back, after which Tottenham sort of just crumbled a little bit. City then went on to score the winner just before the full-time whistle. Teams need to find consistency or they'll just throw leads away like Arsenal did this week. They were 2-0 up against Fulham and then all of a sudden they found themselves 3-2 down. They did manage to pull a goal back and make it 3-3 but the fact remains they had a 2-0 lead and they just squandered it. Fulham shouldn't have been able to come back from that against a team like Arsenal but for whatever reason they just let it slide. If Arsenal want to secure Champions League football next season, which is absolutely vital if they're going to stand any chance of building a title winning squad again, then they need to sort themselves out of the back. Onto my match pick, and I didn't do too well last week, Newcastle West Ham was hugely promising, but it ended up being a bit of a damp squib, so sorry about that. Let's see if I can do better this week, there's only one match I can really choose, and that is Arsenal versus Tottenham. It's always an explosive rivalry and this weekend's going to be no different, especially as both teams are going to be looking for a huge win to make up for their losses of the past weekend. That's it from me. Once again, I'm Daniel J. Layton, vlogging for gettingbetterposters.com. As we continue and we learn more about design, people who make posters are improving. And you can get them all here at gbposters.com. Isn't that right, Miles? Head over to the GB Posters. They sell posters and other things. Uh... And it's good. So good. Bye for now.